Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about Scream Queens Season 1 Episode Ghost Stories. So this is um, somewhat of a spooky episode. There's a lot of like, you know, the Red Devil's doing like a lot of the killing type stuff. And so like, it's not the Halloween episode. The Halloween episode, I really don't remember. Like it's been so long since I've seen this. I've only ever watched it twice in its entirety, even though I have it on DVD and stuff. It's just, I never had a chance to just like rewatch it. All this thinking streaming, man. Like every time you get done watching one thing, there's something else you gotta find. <laughs> I miss my DVDs and stuff. And yeah, this is on streaming. I could just watch it on streaming. But then it's like, what's the point of watching it on streaming if I have it on DVD? So, yeah. So, I know it's not Halloween no more. I know it's not October no more. But I still got a lot of crap to put out for um, Halloween. So, yeah, you're going to be seeing a lot of stuff during December, January, maybe even February. <laughs> I mean, pushing out stuff for like Halloween and stuff. Although I'm almost done. The only thing I'm really doing is like... Um, I got like one more haunting hour, maybe two, three more haunting hour episodes. I don't know. I might do those other two, but I know one for sure I'm going to do. Um, a whole bunch of goosebumps, um, a couple more movies, um, some random TV shows that have Halloween themes to them. And so, yes, yeah, so I should, probably should be done with that sometime in December, maybe January or something like that. So this episode. So before I start, I remember I was in the comments section on the YouTube video. Um, having to do with like screen queens and like somebody said that they can't believe Riverdale is still on and this show got canceled after two. I totally agree. And then somebody commented talking about well Riverdale has like well plot out storylines and nah, nah, nah. I'm like man what have you been smoking? <laughs> Speaking of this, there has been rumors since 2020 that Ryan Murphy is trying his best to get a season three for this show. And they're still talking about it till this day. Even one of the actresses, Jamie, Lee, Cur um, Jamie Lee Curtis said that she doubts it, um, but you never know, you know what I'm saying? She said she's on board if it is, and so is pretty much the entire cast that's still alive. I hope so, that'll be nice. I am kind of curious to know what they're gonna do with the Leah Michelle character, only because of how her character ended in the second season. And also because of, well, what happened last year. <laughs> but being seeing how she's Ryan Murphy's golden girl, she'll probably be in it. So in a way, this season, let's see, but this episode directly happens after what happened last episode. So basically, Boone is seen to still be alive. Not only is he still alive, but he's not even really gay. He's straight. And he's in love with Zayday. And he wants her. So he's been walking around campus in their disguise. And people keep mistaking him for Joaquin Phoenix for some bizarre reason. But anyway, Chanel number three, she sees him and she's like completely shocked. And he's all like, I can explain. She's all like, well, you're Boone's dead ghost. <laughs> and he's like, that's exactly right. I'm here to haunt the campus <laughs> and stuff like that. And so like, she thinks he's after her because... In her own words, he wanted to gay pledge their sorority and she turned them down. And so he feel, she feels like he wants revenge because of that. And then when he walks closer, she like screams in a very cute kind of way. Like I really love um, Billy Lord and everything. She cracks me up in this show with her dry wit. I really want to see her in something else because this is the only show I've ever seen her in. So I am curious to see if she acts differently or talk differently and like anything else. So like, you know, he pretty much spooks her and she like screams running, hollering and stuff like that. And um, we get like Chanel and she's talking to like the other Chanel's and talking about how like Brad proposed to her and all this other stuff, which really pisses off Hester. Because him and Hester like slept together prior to this episode. And like they're all like, well, how did he propose to you? And she's like, well, technically he gave her a silver wishbone, like turkey wishbone leg thing. Uh, well, not leg, but like a silver turkey wishbone necklace. And so like she said, pretty much every woman who's ever gotten one from a rat well 
um, they proposed to um, shortly after and stuff. So she's happy because she gets to marry another rich person and it was going to make her like uber rich. And the outfit she's going to wear, the thing, she didn't wear there. But basically she's wearing like a brown dress that has a very like Native American thing. And because she's so uneducated and she's also a racist, she's getting all her Native American like famous people mixed up and thinking um, that she's supposed to be this character, but actually she's like another. So her crazy behind is like doing that. And um, what is it? So like, so like Zayde, she don't get really that much to do in this, but um, she pretty much invites like Grace to like Thanksgiving with her grandma or her aunt or something like that. Well, she never went for some reason. Um, Zayde never went to her grandma's for Thanksgiving. Instead, she stayed on campus. Um, because of that other review that I had up. So anyway. Um, when Boone was on the phone talking to somebody on the cell, he was talking to his sister, the other killer and stuff. And so, like, he was talking about how, like, they need to get rid of Gigi and, like, all this other crap and, you know, stuff like that. And so, like, at some point in time, he goes to, um, Brad's. While Brad is kind of like, he's, like, uh, packing his stuff because the camp is about to get shut down because of all the murders and so Brad has one of those machines that kind of like it wraps things in the bag and sucks out all the air <laughs> He's putting all his clothes in there and Boone's all like and he just shows up out of nowhere like Boone is so stupid He's supposed to be dead <laughs> And Chad's all like so rumors are true. You're a ghost <laughs> and everything. He's like, oh totally so then like it's weird because he's all like, look, I need, I need something from you. Like, I need, like, your date shirt. I need to ask Zayday, to, like, on a date so we can, like, bone and stuff. And he's all like, oh, um, dude, aren't you supposed to be, like, super gay? <laughs> he's like, oh, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> he pretended to be gay and stuff. Like, I throw people off the scent. And so he's all like, why do you want to have sex with her? And he's all like, you know, well, have you ever heard the phrase, once you go black, you never go back? He's like, yeah. He's all like, well, if you have sex with a black girl and you're dead, you get to come back alive. And that's where that phrase started from. <laughs> and Brad's like, of course, Boone, of course. <laughs> but then Brad tells him how like he's been messing around in like um, Boone's bed with other women and how he banged Denise, the security guard woman, and talking about like how hot Hester is now that she took off like her neck brace and stuff like that. And um so they bond and you know he gives him his shirt and stuff like that so now since denise is, i think it's the new like house mother for like the sorority girls made in the last episode um i think the last episode or last two um she's making chanel like bubble wrap all her expensive clothes and chanel wasn't like why are you making me do this for she's all like because if you have an outfit that's really expensive you wrap it in bubble wrap <laughs> But she's all like, she loves bubble wrap because she ain't allowed to have a gun in security. She can only have like a taser. And what she does with the bubble wrap is she points her finger like a gun and then she just pops it and then makes that gun noise. When she does it three times, it freaks out Chanel number three. To where Chanel number three is all like, I can't take it no more. I have to tell you the truth. I met the ghost of dead gay boom. <laughs> And like, they all like, there's no such thing as ghosts. And she's like, yes it is. Then how would you expect me to meet the dead ghost of dead gay boom? <laughs> <laughs> and so like, Denise is all like, oh girl, you must be like freaked out. But like, don't worry. Like, I'm gonna like, take care of you. So what Denise does, she's like, I'm gonna tell you a scary story. Which is the title of the episode. Because she said... Whenever Denise is scared, think of somebody's gonna break in her place, she tells herself a scary story. And then, like, then she's so freaked out by the scary story, she's no longer scared about nobody's breaking in her place. <laughs> so it don't make no sense. <laughs> so then she starts telling stories of, like, this woman who's a hitchhiker with hairy arms and all this other stuff. But then she tells them of, like, these Japanese ghost stories. See, around this time, Japanese ghost movies were very popular because of the rain so much that only two really got adapted in America And once their franchises they started like doing sequel after sequel that kind of like wasn't as good as the first 
they very quickly died out in America. And so, like, she was telling them the ghost story of um, this one ghost. I think it's called, like, the Kappa ghost, something like that. I can't remember. But it lives down in the sewer, right? And so, like, and the setting is in a Japanese, like, building. So it's, like, an Asian girl. And she's wearing, like, one of those, like, um, school outfits. And, you know, the room is very, out in, like, an Asian decor and everything, right? So she goes over to the toilet and then she sits on it and it's like this monstrous little freaky ghost thing that lives inside the toilet because it lives down in the sewer and it waits for you to sit on the toilet. Then it grabs you by your JJ <laughs> and it pulls you down into the sewer. And then we see the girl, her legs go flying up in the air. And she goes straight down the toilet and then, um, and she's all like, but I have another good story. And I forget the name of this one too. But this one has to be called the Red Cloak. Basically, it's a killer that wears a red cloak. And it waits for all the toilet paper to be nearly empty in the bathroom stall. And then when you go in there to pee, there's only two rolls of toilet paper. One's red and one's blue. And the killer ghost thing makes you decide. If you pick the red toilet paper, then what it does, it takes a knife and it slashes your throat. And then it makes it look like you're wearing a red cloak. But if you pick the blue toilet paper, then it strangles you to death to where you turn blue. Well, it makes it look like you're wearing a blue cloak. And so it freaks the girls out and everything. They're all like, stop telling ghost story. They're like, stop telling ghost story to do with the bathroom because I got to pee. <laughs> so the girls, like, they leave and everything. And um, Hester's just looking there sad. And Denise is all like, do you need another ghost story to make the heebie-jeebies go away? And Hester's like, yes, I'm very much enjoying myself. Hester's very weird. Let's just say that. Like, she's just strange and chaotic and stuff and bizarre. And so, like, that one really sucks with the Leah Michelle character, man. Like, God, why she had to be so, like, stupid and toxic and stuff? So, anyway, um, Denise, she goes to use the actual restroom. And when she goes, all of a sudden, the only toilet paper there is red and blue. And she's like, oh, no, which one do I pick? <laughs> See, the killer was in the room overhearing all this. Well, technically, Boone was and everything. So, um, oh, I forgot to mention. So, at some point, I am going to do like a review of this show. So, even though there are two technically killers that are twins, because Boone has a sister, there's an accomplice killer as well. So, there's three. So, anyway, but, um, so, like, I guess it was the accomplice that was doing this because Boone was doing something else. I forgot because he's trying to seduce um, Zayday and stuff. So anyway, she overhears a noise and then she sees the red killer look above her and jumps down in the stall. So they struggling, they're wrestling and the killer is trying his best to kill her. And so she pulls out her taser, but then she shoots it in the air by mistake. And then so next thing you know, the killer like, like they, they struggle to the point where she busts open the door by falling on it and she runs out screaming and then she goes into the room with um the sorority girls again and she's all like the killer is in the house and he just tried to kill me in the bathroom so the girls are like well we have to run and Denise is like oh no we don't Denise is all like we ain't leaving this room until I hear another ghost story <laughs> and they're like what are you talking about we have to leave the killer kills us <laughs> and she's like my blood pressure is up too high <laughs> and I need to hear a ghost story to calm me down. <laughs> so she takes out her handcuff and she handcuffs the two door handles to get there. <laughs> oh my God. So Hester has a story. It's set back in the 1950s. It's where a woman is driving a car and she's driving on a long empty road and she goes to a gas station before she gets there. There's like a giant truck honking the horn and like turn on the bright lights to her when she gets out the um truck drivers are all like i saw somebody in the back of your um seat and every time they rose their head up i like shine my lights and everything and um and then they kept putting their head down 
it was the meat hook killer with a meat hook. So they open the door and the meat hook killer leaves. And then Denise all like, whew, that really calmed my nerves and everything. Cause I was about to have a stroke if I didn't hear no ghost stories. <laughs> and so like, um, Chanel number, what's she number? She five or six. Um, so she's all like, screw this. I'm leaving. I'm packing my stuff and I am going home. <laughs> So like while well, all this is going on, before, well actually Boone is going to like try to seduce Zayday now. And so the thing Chad told him that Zayday has a boyfriend, she, she's dating Earl Grey, which is the name of a T. And her boyfriend happens to be British. And Earl Grey is the same kind of tea that Jean-Luc Picard used to drink in Star Trek Next Generation. Interesting. So anyway. He goes to her and he's all like, look, Zayday, I'm a ghost and I'll come back to make love to you and stuff like that. And she's all like, um, that's funny because I forgot what she tells him. But then Grace comes in. She's like, boom, you're alive. And she's like, yeah, girl, he tried to use the oldest trick in the book. Talking about he a ghost. <laughs> and so they go to like apprehend him, but he falls out like the window, right? And then, so they can't find him and they're high up. And then, so at some point he sees like Earl Grey and he kills him and stuff. So then, um, those two go downstairs to the rest of the sorority girls and tell them like what they saw. And then, so the girls are like, well, he's a ghost. And they're like, there's no such thing as ghosts. And then, so number three comes down. She's all like, I'm leaving. One thing, great thing about number three, I love to death. Is she's so spazzy, like she talks so fast with a California accent and she's just so spazzy and everything. And then so she leaves and then so when she's driving, next thing you know, the same thing happens in this, um, the, the ghost story that Hester told. So she's driving on a long road, listening to the radio. She stops at a gas station before she stops there. There's a car, a big old truck flashing its lights at her. And we see the red devil in the back of her seat. And so when she gets out, the first thing she does is she kicks the driver in the nuts. <laughs> and he's all like, why'd you do that for? She's like, because you kept like following me and flashing your lights. And he's all like, because I saw somebody in the back of your car seat. And that's when I kept flashing my lights. They kept putting their head down. She's like, well, oh, well, how do you expect me to like know that? <laughs> so they go to check and the, the red killer devil dude's not there. And then, so he's all like, oh, well, you know, I am a little high <laughs> and everything. I've been driving for so many hours at night. And then, next thing you know, the red devil comes out with a machete and it stabs him in the back. She takes off running in her car and she drives off. When she gets back to the sorority house, she tells them like what happened and stuff. And so like, Hester, she goes to see Chad and he's pissed because he loves to like pack up um, his laundry and stuff. That, that's his major in college. <laughs> and so she tells him, how can you like love Chanel and not me and blah, blah. He insults the crap out of her. He tells her her breath smells like cheeseburgers <laughs> all the time. <laughs> he doesn't like her neck brace. When they made love and everything, she farted. <laughs> and of course the whole poo belly thing from the Thanksgiving episode. And so she walks away all creepy talking about like, oh, you will be mine and stuff like that. So then she goes back to the sorority house and she tells them that I'm pregnant with Chad's baby and blah, 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 blah. And like, so this pisses off, of course, um, Chanel, because he constantly cheats on her with so many women, even Denise, like I said before. So Chanel goes to confront him. And he straight up confessed, and she's all like, you know Hester's pregnant, right? So he's sad and upset. He does not want to have um, a child with her. And he tells her straight up, you know, I'm going to have to marry her. That's just what my family members do when we knock up ugly girls and stuff. And she's all like, oh no, I will handle um, Hester and everything. And he's all like, handle how? And she's all like, what do you think? He's all like, Chanel, are you the killer? She's all like, well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> so one interesting thing that happens that the Dean has finally now called the cops and the cops are so stupid. Like the main cop is all like, you know, I think the reason why we can't catch this boom killer is because he's a ghost. And so I've called like a ghost expert and everything like that. 
And so the dean's just like, you two are idiots. Y'all need to leave. Because she had bone like the cop. And the sorority there will tell her straight up, you have done absolutely nothing. Like you've been trying to shut our sorority down. 13 people have died in a month. Uh, and the woman hasn't done like anything and stuff. And so like they know they're going to catch the kill. They have to do it like themselves. You know what I'm saying? So towards the end, we see Chanel talking to Hester and the other Chanel's are there. And so, well, actually before Hester gets there, she talks to the Chanel's all like, we need to do something about Hester and all this other crap because like we're a sisterhood and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and we need to stick together and we need to kill that Chanel. And they're all like, we can't kill her. And they're like, and so they actually agree to do it. So what, well, well, but they don't, but they don't want to do it. But Chanel, all like, you know, we have to and stuff. So what they do is they devise a plan to prove that she's not pregnant instead. They give her wine to drink, um, soft cheese, and sushi. Because apparently pregnant people aren't supposed to um, eat sushi, eat soft cheese. And of course, you ain't supposed to drink alcohol. She does all three. So Chanel's like, ha, see, you ain't pregnant because you did all this other stuff. And then Hester's like, okay, fine, you got me. I'm not pregnant. But Chad doesn't need to know that, and he's going to marry me instead of you. So then, Hes uh, so then Chanel gives Hester this big speech about like sisterhood and all this other stuff, and it makes like Hester happy. Only for Chanel to push her hard as she can down the steps, and then she just goes tumbling down, and then you hear like a crack towards her neck. But of course, she's alive because I already reviewed the next episode of Thanksgiving episode, and so like Chanel tells the other Chanels. Now let's go put her in the meat locker. Because pretty much so many people have died on that campus. So what Chanel just does is just puts them in the meat locker. Hoping that the press and stuff won't find out. And so like, yeah. This is just a weird, wacky, satire dark comedy type show. It's hilarious. It is funny. You have to watch this on Hulu. And if you don't, then look for clips online of all the Chanel's. It has like their best moments and they are hilarious in this thing. Like Emma Roberts was born to play this role, man. It now makes me wonder how she would have done as Harley Quinn. So towards like the very, very, very end of the episode, we see Boone and the Red Devil killing. And he's talking about like how he has new knives and he can't wait to like try them out. And they have to put it into like GG and stuff. <clears throat> and so like, it's always weird. Cause you know, I was like, okay, well, why, do, why is the red killer still wearing the costume? Why don't they show the person's identity? You know, cause it's his sister, but they don't want to reveal who the identity of the um, killer is. But this is actually the accomplice in the costume. Now he knows that and stuff, but he asked the person to come. So GG come. And he tells Gigi pretty much like, we don't need you no more. You know, we was born in that same asylum. Um, we had to like defend for ourselves. Like he came up with so much of the stuff like um, of how to like, you know, um, plan out these murders and stuff like that. And so like he tells the um, accomplice to come over and let's kill Gigi. So the accomplice pulls up the knife and you think it's going to stab Gigi, but no. It stabs him instead and kills him. Now, Gigi, she doesn't know that this is the accomplice. She thinks it's the sister. Now, wasn't that spooky? All right, well, I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs>